Good afternoon, BookTube. Well, it's afternoon here in the UK, and uh, I have a little time. Um, well, actually, I have quite a bit of time uh, until I go back to work on the 29th. So, um, I thought I'd make another video. Uh, this is sort of unplanned, uh, as were the last two, the bibliography and the personal library one. Um, uh, Mark at Mark Richardson's uh, Richardson Reads um, thought uh, he said in a comment that he would be interested in uh, seeing the books and uh, me talk about the John Ryland's library catalog books of their exhibitions uh, that I have or I have some of them um, uh, I picked these up a couple years ago uh, I haven't gone I haven't read them uh, all the way through I've looked through. Uh, uh, some of their descriptions and so forth, but uh, let's take a look at them here. Um, this is the set. Oh, kind of a bit unruly. Um, there is five of them, uh, and uh, they're bound. Uh, there's a couple in each, at least two, except the first one. Uh, there's uh, two catalogs in each. Now they do. They're like a catalog, a description of their um, of their exhibition. The first one um, is uh, March seven. It was published March seventh, nineteen o four, and I think that was the actually uh, the date of the the um, the. Uh, exhibition uh, the, uh, that the catalog will deal with. Uh, these were bound up by the library as far as I can tell and uh, as you can see here this is um, oops um, it's from the library it has their uh, book plate in it and we'll see in another one where it says compliments there's a slip laid in compliments of the library uh, and this one here is the John Ryland's Library Man in Manchester, catalog of an exhibition of Bibles illustrating the history of the English versions from Wycliffe to the present time, including the personal copies of Queen Elizabeth, General Gordon, and Elizabeth Fry. And that there is the title page. And let's see here, it goes into, yeah, just as a, uh, it goes by case by case. Uh, they had all the books in cases, obviously. Uh, and it's uh, John Wycliffe, and they spelt the Wycliffe, W-I-C-L-I-F. Uh, and the earlier translation of portions of the Bible in English. And they, each, each item, they go into a little uh, more detail, like, uh, uh, Biblia, the Bible, that is the study of Holy Scripture, the Old Testament, faithfully trans, uh, translated into English. Um, in, uh, what is that? Uh, MDXXXV, so that's uh, 1805, I think that is. Yeah, 1805. As the first complete Bible printed, that doesn't make sense, but uh, that's what it's saying. Uh, first complete Bible printed in English. The translation was made uh, was made not from the original Greek and Hebrew, but from the Vulgate and other versions by a Yorkshireman, Miles uh, Cloverdale. Afterwards, Bishop of Exeter. Nothing definite is known as to the place of printing or the name of the printer, but certain features point to Zurich and to uh, Froshover. There is a curious reading in uh, Jerome uh, 7.22 uh, where balm at Gilead is rendered treacle at Gilead. Um, so yeah, and it goes into, and it's uh, there was one here, I, uh, it was called the Wicked Bible. Um, let's see if I can find that. Uh, it's it's where there was a misprint, and the word "not" uh, was uh, was left out. So I think it has to do with the uh, thou. It should say "thou shalt not commit adultery," where in this version it says "thou shalt 
commit adultery. So therefore, commit adultery. Um, so and then, then there's a, uh, a quite long description of <coughs> excuse me, uh, Queen Elizabeth's Bible. And it also includes, uh, well this one doesn't actually, uh, the others include photographs. Um, and then it just goes into, yeah, more details. Uh, this is the second one. It's the catalog of the manuscripts and printed books exhibited on the occasion of the visit of the National Council of the Evangelical Free Churches. And that was again uh, in March 7th, but in 1905 instead. And that was, that's the second uh, little sort of pamphlet that's in the first volume. And they, on this occasion, they printed the back cover of the original paper um, editions of it. Um, but yeah, so that's been bound up. It's a little worse for wear, this first volume. It's got a little bit of wear at the bottom, but as I say, I picked it up uh, from uh, a discounted from a bookseller that it's been sitting there probably for years and nobody nobody bought it and nobody was interested in it. Um, now, let's go to the second volume, which is more substantial. It's thicker. Uh, and it's a catalog of, again, exhibitions. Uh, again, with the uh, book plate. This is an ex-library copy from the Queen's College. It's cancelled from the library... Queen's College, Oxford. So it's an ex-library copy that was presented by the looks of it uh, to the library itself. See, with the compliments of the librarian that's been laid in. So that was given to the uh, Queen's College Library. This one is uh, the John Rylands Library Manchester, catalog of the, of the selection of books and broadsides illustrating the early history of printing exhibited on the occasion of the visit of the Federa Federation of Master Printers and Allied Trains in June 1907, in Roman numerals. Now, again, it just goes through as a description of, of all the items that they have, case by case. Um, and like a woodcut of St. Christopher. This famous woodcut is the earliest known piece of printing to which a date is attached. It is pasted on the inner board of the binding of a manuscript entitled Laws Virginius, uh, which was formerly in the library of the monastery of Buxheim in, in uh, Sabia. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be Serbia. Uh, it was discovered in 1769 by the German bibliography uh, Heineken. Uh, a similar print of the Assumption is pasted on the inside of the other board of the binding, and it is uh, surmised that these prints were pasted in their present position, not with any idea of preserving them, but with the object of covering up the much bescribed, bescribbled boards, and so making uh, the book tidy. The inscription at the bottom of the print reads, and that's in... Um, part of it's uh, Latin, but I don't think it's all Latin. Uh, but I, I can't read it, sorry. Uh, but yeah, it just goes through and describing each book like that. This one does have some photographs in. Um, most Well, actually, uh, it's mostly the frontispiece, I think, of the next um, one is just of the library. Uh... And this is a brief historical description of the library and its contents. And that's 1907 as well. And it's, it, it says it's like pr printed for the order of the governors for private circulation. So again, this was sent to uh, the Queen's Library in Oxford. And there's the title page of that. And as you can see at the bottom, where it says uh, for private circulation. And that is a nice hall there in the library. And they call it a brochure, the introductory note. Uh, the object of this present brochure is to provide visitors to the library with a brief narrative of the foundation of the institution, followed by a hurried glance at some of the most conspicuous of its literary treasures and a short description of the building. That was written in June 07 by Henry Guppy.
Now, and the contents go through, yeah, just a brief historical sketch, inception and dedication, formation of the Althorpe Library, uh, a living library, the contents of the library, early printed book room, the Aldine Library, the Bible Room, the Greek and Latin classics, the Italian classics, the English classics, history, theology, philosophy, uh, and other sections, description of the building, a list of trustees, governors, and principal officers, rules and regulations, which is quite interesting. Um, let's look at a few of those. Uh, that's page 51. As I said, I, I have read a little bit of this, uh, but not all of it. The rules and regulations are quite interesting, and they do change uh, throughout and, uh, this, this uh, uh, selection. Uh, the use of the library is restricted to purpose of research and reference, and under no pretense whatever must any book, manuscript, or map be removed from the building. Uh, yeah, persons desirous of being admitted to the to read in the library must apply in writing to the librarian, specifying their profession or business their place of abode, and the particular purpose for which they seek admission. Um, goes to the just 22 um, uh, rules. The last one is, all communications respecting the use of the library must be addressed to the librarian. And I'm assuming, uh, Henry Guppy uh, was the librarian at this time. Um, and it says, yeah, readers, uh, rule number 15... Oh, actually, let's do rule number 14 first. Books of great value and rarity may be consulted only in the presence of the librarian or one of his assistants. 15. Readers before entering the library must deposit all wraps, canes, umbrellas, parcels, etc. at the porter's lodge in the vestibule and receive a check for same. Number 16. Conversation, loud talking, and smoking are strictly prohibited in every part of the building. 17. Readers are not allowed in any other part of the building save the library without a special permit. Um, well, mo most make sort of sense, but the uh, definitely the loud talking that seems to be given now in most libraries. Uh, again, um, another one that's got the same frontispiece, and it's again another catalog of an exhibition of Bibles illustrating the history of the English versions from Wycliffe to the present time, including personal copies. So they had another exhibition in 1907 uh, for um, because it, it is a different uh, catalog. So I'm assuming it's a different uh, a different um, exhibition for this. And again, it's it's by case by case. Um, and um, here it looks like is the exhibition. Uh, yeah, the Bible room. And there's uh, a picture of the Bible room. And it's like introduction pre uh, Wycliffe uh, paraphrases and the Wycliffe Bible. It goes into a little bit of history there. Uh, and the last one in here is Catalog of the Exhibition of Illustrated Manuscripts, principally biblical and liturgical, exhibited on the occasion of the meeting of the Church Congress in October uh, 1908. Again, it's printed by the governors, sold at the University Press. So, uh, some of these are more, uh, more widely available, uh, but they were actually all pr uh, uh, printed together, uh, bound together here. And here's uh, a picture of the main staircase, uh, as it was, and I think it still is. I've actually not visited the Rylands Library. I follow them on Twitter, and they still, by looks of it, have fabulous exhibitions, and the building looks amazing. I, I do have to get there sometime. So that was Volume 2, and Volume 3 is just continues on, a uh, catalogue of exhibitions uh, again with the book plate in the front uh, and this one has a little more it's a lectures in connection with celebration to be given in Rylands and, and it's showing um, some uh, card that's been tipped in 
for uh, the lectures and that's just above and over the with the compliments of the librarian uh, this one is a catalog of the exhibition of manuscripts and printed copies of the scriptures illustrated the history of the transmission of the Bible showing in the main library from March to December uh, 1911 uh, it's a tricentenary of the authorized version of the Bi of the English Bible, uh, 1611 to 1911. And again, it just goes, uh, Henry Guppy's done the introductory note. Um, case one was the manuscripts, Hebrew and Greek. Uh, and again, it just goes through a, a history of that with a page of uh, this the early Vulgate manuscript about... 1400 and it just continues on uh, with detailed description uh, it, again it's it, it falls into the bibliographical aspect of things uh, because it talks about like this one here a facsimile of the codex uh, uh, Vatican Vaticanus um, th this is a facsimile of what is generally held to be the oldest and the most valuable of the manuscripts of the Greek Bible, the Codex uh, Vaticanus. Uh, it belongs, as its name implies, to the Vatican Library at Rome, where it has been at, at least from 1481. It is designated by the letter B to distinguish it from other uh, unical manuscripts as the Codex Sionicus, styled S, and the Codex Alexandrius, styled A. There is substantial agreement amongst paleographers in assigning it to the 4th century. Um, yeah, and then it goes through. It's got early texts and variations uh, with Hebrew, um, Greek texts, uh, partial manuscripts. Um, it was very fun actually looking through this one because I had actually, uh, part of my uh, undergraduate and Near Eastern archaeology was to take biblical Hebrew, uh, which I've completely forgotten now. It's been, what is it, 25 years? Um, almost 30 now. God, time flies. Uh, but anyway, um, so that was very fun to, because I'd read uh, uh, about these uh, manuscripts, and I've seen a few actually since then, at, uh, or, or bits of them, at the British Library, they have uh, an exhibition room that uh, routinely changes, and sometimes they have specific ones. But it would be nice to see all this originally at uh, at uh, Manchester at the John Rylands. Uh, and here's Caxton's uh, Golden Legend. Um, it's Caxton's printing, um, obviously all black and white uh, for the time. The second part in here um, is it's a medieval manuscript in jeweled book covers, uh, shown in the main library from January the uh, January uh, the twelfth to December um, nineteen nineteen twelve. Sorry, I was stumbling over this because it's got January and then it's got the Roman numerals, but it's not full year, so I'm assuming. It means January the 12th, X11. Um, and the frontispiece for this is St. John from the Greek Gospels, Byzantine, 11th century. It's Case 1, um, Book 10. And again, a photograph in black and white. Um, and again, introduction by Henry Guppy. And let's look for some. The Emperor Otto's Gospels, German 10th century. Uh, jeweled casing. Uh, again, uh, black and white doesn't really lend much, but remember this is 1912. Um, and illuminated King Charles the Seventh Book of Hours, uh, French about 1430. And again, that would be nice in color. I'm sure um, you can find scans of this on the internet now in color. But this is the original um, catalog for the exhibitions. Um, the Colonna Missal, Italian about 1517. 
Again, um, as you can see on that side, it's just a description of all the books in detail that you can see on the shelf. So uh, you would go in and I was, presume you'd have this this catalog with you and just read through and go, oh, well, that's that's that one there, and and uh, and and go through it. It would be a it would take you quite a while actually because these are like a hundred and some pages each. These catalogs. And the last two are, well, the one is mostly a historical description. It's, it's a more detailed historical description, quite, quite lengthy, of, of the library itself. Um, and maybe I'm making this video too long with that siren going, but we'll see. We'll, we're almost finished. Um, there again, a uh, room in the library. That was the early printed book room. And yeah, it just goes to the contents of the library, uh, and again, more detailed descriptions um, of, the, of the earliest printed editions in the Greek and Latin. Uh, and again, it just gives a bibliographical uh, outline of the individual book, and then um, a paragraph generally uh, about it, uh, whether where it was found, um, and, and anything that's descriptive or uh, historical uh, relating to the book uh, itself. Uh, and then the second uh, part in this one is um, description of the library and its contents with a catalog of the selection of manuscripts and printed books exhibited on the occasion of the visit of the Congregational Union of England and Wales in October 1912 with illustrations. Um, again, the frontispiece is this uh, really beautiful hall um, which they seem to use it on every every uh, every book, uh, every uh, catalog, and again it's just a brief historical sketch. Uh, more that's the Bible room that was shown before. Um, yeah, just more uh, similar. Uh, Saint John from the Greek Gospels, Byzantine eleventh century, showing where that book is as well. Case two, uh, and then, oops, hit the camera a bit. Uh, this is a, a sketch, um, well, it's, it's called a catalog of the exhibition of the works of Shakespeare, his sources, and the writings of his principal contemporaries with an introduction and sketch uh, and 16 facsimiles. It's a tricentenary tricentary uh, of the death of Shakespeare from to April 23rd, 1916. And this is the last volume that I have. I don't know if they ever continued this, but again, it's just all Shakespeare uh, with uh, uh, title pages of some of the books. And again, every item or manuscript they have, again, it's well documented and well descriptive. Uh, and here's uh, another title page for 15... 54 uh, and it just yeah just continues all the way through uh, the survey of uh, this is a little different this is uh, yeah it's just contemporary books I think they have of the time uh, with uh, Shakespeare uh, England's Parnassus uh, there title page and this is Survey of London, uh, which would really be nice. It's Stowe's Survey, 1598. Um, I would give anything to, almost anything, to have an original copy of Stowe's like this, but I could never afford it. Uh, let's see, yeah, and that's about it. And it's got, you know, a uh, list of publications in the back. So that is my Rylands Library um, small little collection of five volumes of their catalogs of their exhibitions. Um, if there's anything else that anybody wanted more specific or anything about this, please ask me in the contents or does anybody, have they seen this before? Uh, do they have other volumes, later volumes uh, of this? Uh, was it continued? Uh, is there sort of a whole bookcase or several bookcases of this up to now of their catalogs? Uh, I would love to know.